I'm in Nashville, Indiana at TC Steel State Historic Site. Uh, this is the home of the artist Theodore Clement Steele. I guess you could consider him the uh, Indiana equivalent of Monet or someone like that. Um, he's a really great artist. I really enjoy his work and this is uh, where he lived in beautiful Brown County. So uh, we're going to go check out his home and studio. I guess we'll start here. This is the house. He named this the House of the Singing Winds. This is the side of the house. It's really cool. Interesting layout. It was originally just this four room part right here and then they extended on with like some guest bedrooms over here. T.C. Steele was born in 1847 and he grew up in Waveland, Indiana. He developed an early interest in art and received training at the Waveland Collegiate Institute and later at Asbury College, which is now DePauw University, and he got some training in Chicago and Cincinnati. He then returned to Indiana as a commissioned portraitist, which he didn't like so much, but it paid the bills. He married his first wife, Libby, in 1870, and they lived in Battle Creek, Michigan for a while and had some kids. They later moved to Indianapolis where he continued painting commercial signs and commissioned portraits. Libby died in 1899 from rheumatoid arthritis and tuberculosis. He later married Selma Neubacher, who was an art teacher in 1907. They immediately began constructing this home. Selma had the carving on the fireplace made. It is from an old Gaelic tale. It is the only stone carving by Gustav Bowman, their friend who is also a famous artist and woodcutter. She was also 25 years younger than him and they had no children and she died in 1945. In 1910 this property had 211 acres. Selma played the piano. And that's an old bust of Beethoven. And another one of Wagner. This was the dining room. This was the kitchen. Selma painted these cabinets. All the materials for the home had to be brought way out here into the wilderness. There had been no building like this in the area with so many modern appliances of the day. The window down in the wall. So it would, oh it was like a pocket door, really? except oh for gosh. there were pocket windows, so both could go down. It got its name, the House of the Singing Winds, because of the breezes that would blow through the screen porches around the house. Their bedroom. TC study and office. And this is their giant porch. 
It's really cool. Had a great view. And um, Selma's parents and a couple other family members. His first wife is buried in Crown Hill. Mm -hmm. in really pretty oh, wow. musty. Let's see, make sure you note the batteries there, the glass um, that she had put in. They're eight feet deep. And they were the original. And this is his large studio that he built after living here 11 years. It was his dream studio. And this is the inside of his main studio in his later life. He continued to keep one in Indianapolis, but he much preferred this one. In his earlier years, still did a little bit with sculpture. This is a rare sculpture of his. These paintings are from his time in Munich from 1880 to 1885. He obtained funding from a friend and patron along with a few other people to study at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich in exchange for future work. Steele also enjoyed studying the paintings at the Alta Pinacothek and he really developed an interest in landscape painting at this time. He requested his sponsors an additional two years because he was really enjoying it there and I don't blame him. Then he had to return to Indiana in 1885. These paintings are from the two decades after he returned to Indiana. In this painting, the shadow figure is supposed to be his first wife, Libby. His style changed a lot after Munich. His works became much more colorful, and he clearly had more interest in nature and with brighter colors. He had some works at the time that were exhibited at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Society of American Artists. In 1890, he published the Steel Portfolio, which had 25 photogravure prints of his paintings, and a powerful art critic arranged to have his works, along with four other Hoosiers, in a Chicago exhibit called Five Hoosier Painters, and this launched the Hoosier Group. In 1900, he received an honorary degree from Wabash College. He later got one from Indiana University, and his former home in Indianapolis became the first Heron School of Art. He continued making portraits, like the official presidential portrait of President Benjamin Harrison, and also a portrait of James Wickham Riley. He went on two cross-country trips to paint. His work was in the Louisiana Purchase Exposition at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. And at this point, he was beginning to discover Brown County. These are works that he painted in areas around the home. Many could be recognizable scenes if you found the right angles here. This one is of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Indianapolis. That is his studio setup with his easel and paint. This is a mirror orb, it's kind of unusual. This was their outdoor grill, I guess. Gardens are really beautiful. Selma Steel had this lily pond put in. Down the hill from the House of the Singing Winds is the grave of T.C. Steele. This is where Theodore Clement Steele is laid to rest. Born September 11th, 1847. Died July 24th, 1926. Hero's own epitaph. Beauty outlives everything. He carved that in himself with his classic signature. Actually, his ashes are buried here along with his second wife, Selma. They basically have a family graveyard down here. 
by their uh, Selma's parents. These are the Brown County woods that TC still loved to pan so much. Down a ways from the house is this old log cabin. Um, Selma wanted to buy this to have it here. I don't know, I guess to show off. It's kind of a Marie Antoinette move because um, pretty much all their neighbors lived in little log cabins like this and they lived in that castle up on the hill. It was built in the 1870s by the Dewar family who were Scottish immigrants. Looks like they're building a visitor center here. Here's the historical marker. While his first wife was ill, he had this built so they could go on rides together. She could lie down and he could paint. Pretty impressive for the 1890s. Alright, so that was TC Steel State Historic Site. Really cool place. They've done a great job with it. I'm excited to see what the uh, visitor center is like when that opens. Um, but anyways, if you like videos like this, I have a lot of videos at uh, art museums, if you like art, and I just have videos at all sorts of museums, roadside attractions, all that good stuff. So please go watch those and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching.